Okay, I want to go through the solution on this chemistry problem, the solution that, that I developed here. And um, let, me, let me confess right up front, I'm not a chemist. I don't teach chemistry. And uh, so there's a, a high probability that uh, maybe what I have isn't correct. On, on top of that, I'm really old. Uh, I'm in my 70s. So, uh, but let me explain the problem, and I'm going to go through my thinking on it. And, and I'll tell you also that I didn't come up with this solution right away. I had to think about this for a while. Okay, so how much sodium sulfate decahydrate is needed to make 500 milliliters of 0.25 molal solution of sulfate? And this is 500 milliliters of final solution, okay, after you mix the water with the uh, sodium sulfate decahydrate. And um, so first, let me tell you what the definition of molality is. It's uh, molality is here, right here, is the moles of solute that is the moles of sodium sulfate decahydrate, I'm just going to call that decahydrate for now, uh, per 1,000 grams of solvent, which we're going to take to be water. And um, so it's how much your decahydrate in, 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 in mass uh, moles we have to add to a kilogram of water. So that's pure water, that's not solution. And that adds a slightly uh, interesting complication to the problem. And uh, so let me go through here. Uh, notice that we have, if we look at the formula for sodium decahydrate, which is right here, right there, that's it, that we have one sulfate uh, ion for, uh, for each molecule of the decahydrate. So one mole of decahydrate gives us one mole of sulfate. And that's, that's, uh, that's a convenient, okay? So that's a mercy in doing this problem. So we have 0 0.25 moles of solution uh, of sulfate. That's what we want to compute. So all we have to do is figure out 0 0.25 moles of the decahydrate. Uh, and so I look up the uh, molar mass for the decahydrate and to three digits, it's right here, it's 322 uh, grams per mole. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to need this next thing or not, but Typically, if I sit down and start to do a problem that I'm not sure how to do, I kind of write down everything that I might need. I've learned that over the years because often I start a problem and don't know exactly how to do it. I kind of write everything down and, and, and solve the jigsaw puzzle, put pieces together. So I looked up the molar mass for water, and it's the three places. It's 18 grams per mole. And it turns out I'm going to need both of those things. Now, recall again that I want 500 milliliters of solution in the end. So it's not 500 milliliters of water. It's the solution is after we add the decahydrate to the water. And uh, so if they ask me um, uh, a, uh, a question... Uh, for example, if instead of 500 uh, milliliters, if they ask me uh, uh, 1,000 milliliters, it makes sense that I would need twice as much decahydrate to make a 0.25 molar solution that I would need for 500 milliliters. So I'm assuming here that the ratio of the amount of decahydrate that I need is going to be proportional to the milliliters of final solution that I have, okay? So I, I 
double the solution, I have to double the decahydrate. That makes sense, right? If I have a 0.25 molar solution of something and I only use half of it, the half that I use is still 0.25 molar, okay? So the fraction has the same molality as the original amount. So I want, how would I make 0.25 molar solution of uh, decahydrate? Well, I look at the definition and I need moles of solute over 1,000 grams of solvent. So that's 1,000 grams of water. Okay, that's a kilogram. And so I'm going to need one quarter, which is 0.25, one quarter mole of decahydrate. Now, one quarter mole of decahydrate is going to be one mole divided by four, and that's what this is right here. That's in grams, how much decahydrate I need, because I looked it up, 322 is one mole, 322 grams. So I'm going to need that divided by four, which turns out to be 80.5 grams. So I take 80.5 grams of decahydrate, put it in 1,000 grams of water, and that gives me a 0.25 molal solution. So if if that was all that the problem asked, that's what I would need. Now there's a but they but they don't want that. The what they uh they want something a little bit different here. And so let me go through uh now how I figured this out. One mole of decahydrate, that's this right here, has 10 moles of water in it. And we get that from the equation, right? Look up here at the equation. Uh, one mole of, so, uh, of decahydrate, which is right here, if we had, imagine we had a one there for the whole thing. One mole of that it has 10 water molecules in it. So if I have one mole of decahydrate, in order to make that, I need 10 moles of water. Now, when I dissolve the decahydrate in water, what happens is the sodium uh, ions break off, the sulfate ions break off, and, ten, and the 10 water molecules break off. Okay, so now, so what I have then is 10 moles of water as soon as I dissolve one mole of, of decahydrate uh, in the water. Now, so 10 moles of water is 180 grams of H2O. So that means I have 180 grams of water in every 322 grams here, 322, which is one mole of decahydrate, 10 moles of water is 180 grams. So when I add 80.5 grams of decahydrate to water, I'm adding additional water in addition to the sodium ions and the sulfate ions. And in particular, it's 80.5 times the fraction, which is water, is the amount of water I'm adding. So it's 180 divided by 322 times 80.5. So immediately I'm increasing the amount of water in, in, the, in the solvent by 45 grams. So now the solution is no longer a uh, thousand grams or with water we assume it's a thousand milliliters. So the solution now occupies a volume of a thousand forty five milliliters. And uh, how about what happens with the sodium and the sulfate? Well the analogy I like to use here is imagine you have a a box filled with, uh, you know, let's say, five pounds of marbles. So I have a box filled with five pounds of marbles, and it occupies a certain volume. Now, I take a pound of sand. So I take a pound of sand, and I pour it in the box with five pounds of marbles. Does the volume of the mixture, does the amount at which the box is filled, if I measure that as the volume, uh, when I add the sand, it falls in between the marbles. 
So the volume of the material in the box doesn't increase at all. And that's what happens with the sodium ions and the sulfate ions, okay? They don't increase the volume of the solution at all. But if I add um, another half a pound of marbles, the marbles just lay on top of the marbles that are already in there and the volume increases. So I think of adding the sodium and the sulfate as adding sand to the solution. It doesn't increase the volume, but if I add more water to the solution, it does increase the volume. And in particular, I'm adding 45 grams here of, uh, here right there, 45 grams or 45 more milliliters of water. So the volume in my final solution will have changed. So what I say is that, but, but right here, sodium and sulfate add no volume to the solution, right? No volume to the solution. So the solution volume now is 1,045 milliliters because I've added 45 milliliters of water when the decahydrate dissolves. Okay, so now I, now the, I still have 0.25 molal solution because the definition here up here is not about the final solution, but about the original solvent that I've used. I've still used 1,000 grams of original solvent, although now the solution uh, is different than that. It's different than 1,000 milliliters. Okay, so I still have the 0.25 molal solution right here. And, and the way I did that is I took 80.5 grams of decahydrate and put it in uh, 1,000 grams of water, but now the final solution is now 1,045 milliliters. 1,000 grams of water is 1,000 milliliters, so I, and then I added 45 milliliters, so I now have 1,045 milliliters of final solution. Okay, so now to have a 0.25 molal solution of sulfate, I get that from a 0.25 molal solution of decahydrate, so it's the same, but now the final solution is now 1,045 milliliters. So that means that this is a ratio, as I said before, you know, if I double, if I cut this in half and I only use half of it, it's still a 0.25 molal solution. Now I don't, I want almost exactly half, but not quite. The question is, I want 500 milliliters of final solution. So I have to set up a ratio then to compute how much of um, this I need to do 500 milliliters of final solution. And I do that with this right here. I say, okay, I know that 80.5 grams of decahydrate compared to 1,045 milliliters of final solution should be the same as X grams of decahydrate to 500 milliliters of final solution. So I want to figure out how many grams of decahydrate I need uh, in exactly 500 milliliters of final solution. So this is now the ratio I use to do that calculation. So I can solve for X. I'm assuming you know how to solve for X. And I get the answer is X is 38.5 grams of solute. So in order to generate 500 grams or 500 uh, milliliters of final solution, um, or inside 500 milliliters of final solution is 38.5 grams of decahydrate. Um, now, that's how I did the problem. You can look at my solution, decide what you think of it.